So I keep getting asked the same question, which is, Jono, AI is now able to build out full entire NADN workflows on its own. What does this actually mean for the future of freelancing in this space? In today's video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how AI is gonna be reshaping freelancing and why the best freelancers are actually gonna come out on top, providing more value to clients and a simple shift that you can make in 2026 to stay ahead. Let's get into this right now. So before we talk about what to do, I wanna talk about where this is all heading. We're moving closer to a world where you can literally just type one sentence into an AI tool like Claude and get a complete NADN workflow on the other side of it. It sounds kind of wild, but that's where we're at. And when you look at how far things have come, it actually starts to make sense. So if we look back in the past, Zapier launched as one of the first automation tools in 2011 and opened the door for no code automation. Fast forward to 2020, ChatGPT takes off suddenly and AI powered workflows become a reality in tools like of course, Zapier, Make.com, and then NADN. And by 2023, NADN released AI agents. And now in 2025, large language models like Claude or even NADN's built-in tools can now generate entire workflows from one single text prompt. But here is the key. Building these workflows are not going to be going away anytime soon, but they are becoming commoditized. They're easier, they're cheaper, they're faster and more accessible to build than ever before. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, by the way. It just means that the industry is shifting. So you can think about it like the example of Canva or Wix. They didn't kill the web design or web development space. They just lowered the barrier to entry for all of those that wanted to use these tools. And that forced the professionals in that space to move up the value chain and focus on higher level work. And so you can think about it like the same thing that's happening in automation right now. The real opportunity now moving forward is probably not cranking out basic workflows. It's about the strategy, the customization and solving real business problems that actually move the needle and provide outcomes to clients. And so that's where freelancers who end up adapting are going to thrive. And why I say that is because businesses are always going to pay for an outcome, whether it's saving time or whether it's earning money, they're always going to do it. It's the same reason why people hire cleaners, they hire landscapers, they hire bookkeepers or so on and so forth. Could they technically do these jobs themselves? Of course they could, but it's not always the best use of their time. And with freelancing NADN, it's no different. Just because a business could go ahead and build out a workflow on their own doesn't mean that they want to do it. And if they got stuck without knowing how these actual tools work, it could take them days or weeks just to learn the tools to be able to solve the problem on their own. And so their energy is likely better spent on sales, serving the clients or growing their business. All the things that really just make them more money at the end of the day. And that's why there's always going to be demand for people who can step in, build these workflows and give them back hours every single week of their time. So here's the difference between the two. A freelancer usually says, hey, tell me what to build and I'll build it for you. Whereas a consultant might say, let me figure out what you actually need and then I'll design a solution that works for you. And here's why that actually matters. Because businesses know that they need to adopt AI and every single day that goes by, they're falling further and further behind, probably getting stressed out about it. But when clients come to me personally, most the time they either don't know what they need, they don't know how to implement it, or what they think they actually want isn't actually what they need. So my job is to cut through all of that noise and help them land on a winning solution. Now I want to be clear, most people don't start off as consultants. You need to start off as a freelancer first. You'll build a few projects, you'll gain the confidence, and then after you've done five, maybe 10 or 20 projects on Upwork, you've built the experience to step into consulting. And that's the natural progression of this kind of stuff is that you go from builder to advisor or consultant. So let's break down what consulting in AI automation actually looks like. Now you're probably gonna find many different opinions online, but for me, it kind of breaks down to four main parts. The first is when you're working with a client for the first time, you have to hit a home run in your first project by finding the biggest pain point that they're currently experiencing. So on a sales call, what I'll usually ask is, what does your team spend the most amount of time doing that you honestly think could be automated? And it could be marketing, it could be sales, it could be client onboarding, whatever is gonna eat up the most hours for that company. Take note that I build end-to-end systems for clients, not usually just a single workflow that's really important to note. Now, the second thing is, is that I really need to understand that particular system to be able to solve their problem for them. I never assume that I know what their system looks like going into it because I'm probably going to be wrong. Instead, what I like to do is I like to ask one simple 
question and then repeat it over and over again until I understand the whole system. And what that is, is I just say, hey, what is the start of the system? And then what happens next? So for example, somebody might come to me asking for help automating their sales process. And I'll usually ask what the start is, and that could be like an SEO client that fills out a form on their website. And then the next thing is, is, you know, what are they trying to do? Well, they're probably trying to get them on a call. And then after that, they maybe want to book a follow-up call, maybe send over a proposal, all of that kind of stuff. And so that's essentially how this works, but I'll ask the same question over and over again, which is what comes next? First is the lead, then you want to jump on a sales call, then you want to send over a proposal, then you want to be able to schedule a follow-up appointment. And once you know exactly what they're looking for, you can literally map out this entire process in a flowchart tool called Whimsical. Now, the third part is where the magic happens because you can actually start recommending practical solutions to these people. So this comes with experience. Keep in mind, if it's your first job, you're probably not gonna be able to have the practical knowledge to do this in most cases, but after five to maybe 20 jobs in Upwork, you'll start seeing patterns emerge between all the clients that you're working with. And so using the same sales example, my recommendations might be, hey, let's have a form on your website that when somebody fills it out, it's gonna automatically trigger a call between you and the client within 60 seconds, okay? And then if they don't pick up, we might send over follow-up emails. We might send over follow-up text message, all of that kind of stuff to get them onto the sales call. And then once they're on the call, what I would set up for that client is an internal sales form. And this is important because a lot of the times with sales teams, they're just disorganized. They're taking like paper notes or whatever. And I like to have a form that standardizes it so that when they click submit, it can automatically generate the proposal that they need to send out. And this can save a tremendous amount of time. Not only do they have to not have to like type in information on a form twice, first on notes and then second in the CRM, but also the entire proposal, contract, invoice can be fully automated as well. And of course, from there, we can automatically schedule a follow-up call where both sides get notified of the upcoming appointment so they actually show up and then the deal is closed. But I wanna stress one important thing in this whole process, which is you have to be honest about what they do not need. It's one thing to tell them what they need, but it's also incredibly difficult sometimes to tell people, hey, we probably shouldn't go ahead and do that. And so a good consultant is gonna be somebody that isn't just a builder. There's somebody that can say no to distractions or no to shiny objects or whatever to keep the focus on what actually drives material value, things like driving revenue or saving serious time. And the last thing here, number four, is always measuring return on investment. So the thing is, is that if you don't measure results, the value becomes really unclear. It's like, okay, well, you're charging me X amount of dollars and I can't really understand the value you're providing. So why am I paying you at the end of the day? Kind of, kind of is how a lot of clients will think about it. And so the best way to handle this objection is to tie everything into value, right? Leads, sales, or time saved. Now it's pretty easy to tie things into leads or sales. Like, you know, if you build something out and you can objectively acquire a certain amount of leads for them, they can see the direct value that you're getting. But when you're dealing with saving time, it's sometimes a bit more difficult to actually showcase. And so there's two ways that I like to go about doing this. So let's say, for example, you're building a client onboarding system for somebody. You could ask that client, how much time do they normally spend doing it manually? And then that becomes your baseline. Let's say it costs them maybe 20 hours to actually service every single client. They have 10 clients, that's 200 hours that they're saving every single time. If they pay somebody $20, that's saving $4,000 every single month. And so that's option number one, or you could calculate it from the actual workflow. So let's say on that same onboarding example above, and stick with me here, because I know we're doing some math. Let's say they have 100 clients that they're onboarding in a given month. The system has maybe 40 operations or 40 things that you're doing. Each thing saves about two minutes every single time it runs. That's about 133 hours saved every single month. So if they're paying somebody, let's say $25 an hour, which is the average salary in America, that's approximately $3,300 saved every single month. And so when you frame it like that, it's just a no brainer investment for someone to be like, hey, you know, I could potentially save $3,000 every single month indefinitely moving forward. That's likely gonna be something that they want. And that is the advantage of consultation. It's not just about building out workflows, it's about building out the right ones and proving that they actually work. 
So if you're wondering how to put all of this into an action plan, here's a roadmap that I'd follow if I was to start again. The first step is to start as a freelancer finding projects on Upwork. The reason I mention Upwork is because it's the easiest and cheapest and fastest way to start acquiring customers pretty much immediately. And from here, you'll learn how to sell things, figure out what works, and more importantly, what doesn't work, and then build your confidence over time. Now, this is gonna be something that gradually comes over time. There's not gonna be a day where you wake up, you feel super confident. It's just gonna be some kind of gradient where you kind of look back and you're like, wow, like I actually have confidence in the skill that I skills that I've acquired over the last couple of weeks or months or so on and so forth. And so the goal here when you're starting out on Upwork isn't just to maximize the first few deals that you make. You don't necessarily always wanna reach for the moon in terms of the price that you have. It's really about gaining experience so that you can justify higher prices later on. And so if you're worried about pricing, here's a couple options for you. First of all, you could just ask the client, what's your budget? And then just stick with that. So if somebody says, hey, you know, I wanted to spend $2,000, maybe you wanna go ahead and work with them on that price point so that you can close the deal and then gain the skills that you actually need. Or you could work at a discount or you could even work for free, importantly, in exchange for a video testimonial if you do a good job. And that's really important because by collecting video testimonials and case studies, that's gonna help you stand out for future clients. And so when a client goes on Upwork, they are there for a reason, right? They already know that they need the service that they're looking for and they already have the budget. Now they're just trying to justify who is the best service provider for the job. And so social proof is really everything. If you have great video testimonials, you have great case studies, it's gonna be super easy to be able to close deals because they trust that if you've done it in the past, you're also gonna do it in the future as well. Step number three is to make the shift slowly into consulting. So instead of saying, hey, tell me what you want and I'll build it, you can start focusing on what they actually need, map out the entire system in a flowchart tool like Whimsical. Now remember, clients aren't buying workflows, they're buying outcomes. And that could be an end-to-end -end lead system, a client onboarding system, or even a recruitment system. And the fourth and the final step here is to tie that entire system back into measurable outcomes. So tying it to leads, sales, or time saved overall. You can use those numbers to build case studies, secure stronger testimonials, and keep your clients around for years, not just weeks. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate your time. And as always, if you found value in this, hit that subscribe button down below. It helps tell me that I'm doing a good job. If you guys wanna learn more about AI and automation, you can take a look at my YouTube channel. There's tons of free resources there, not only videos, but also all the blueprints I, I go over, they're all free in every single video. And if you guys wanna take AI automation to the next level, you can also take a look at my school community where there is three outcomes. First of all, for those of you looking to learn these tools, to help save time, earn money, all that kind of stuff. The second outcome is for those of you who are looking to get into freelancing or build an AI automation agency. I'll show you exactly how you can find, close, and fulfill deals. And then the third transformation is for those of you who have an existing business. Now, I give you the exact roadmap that allowed me to scale to seven figures and automate up to 80% of my entire company with plug and play solutions that you can literally just import into your business as well. Thanks guys for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.